Bill Ferguson is one of Dubbo's most notable sons. Born in 1880 in Darlington Point to a Wiradjuri mother and a Scots father, by 14 Bill was in the shearing shed alongside his father, learning from the forceful speakers of the fledging union movement. Bill took up the cause of his fellow shearers very early in life, fighting for better workplace conditions and to improve the lot of his marginalised Indigenous kinsfolk. The flame was lit when he saw the unequal treatment of Aboriginal people in the wool industry and in time he put his powerful voice to work on their behalf. He worked hard all his life to improve the conditions of workers, irrespective of colour. By the early 30s, Bill Ferguson had settled his wife and family in Dubbo. He considered it a relatively tolerant town. As the son of a Wiradjuri mother, he spoke her language, had a prized collection of weapons and talked of his people's traditions to his children while encouraging them to get a public school education. True son of a true Scotsman, he was a staunch Presbyterian, an elder and a highly respected member of the local community. Carefully, he built a team that gathered first-hand evidence of the ill-treatment of the dark people, as he called them. He and his team spent years amassing a vast amount of information about what was happening to his people. Poor schooling at Menindi, tuberculosis at Bolgandra mine, low wages for timber fellas in Pilliga, beatings of Borarana. In Dubbo, on June 27, 1937, he launched the Aborigines Progressive Association to a Masonic Hall packed with Indigenous people. He demanded that they be recognised as citizens and that the Hated Protection Board be disbanded. By November, his team was telling these stories to a State Parliament Select Committee of Inquiry into the neglect of the Indigenous population. Board MPs and Protection Board members eventually stopped turning up. An outraged Ferguson called in the press to protest at the contemptuous treatment. In January, he went to Melbourne where he and William Cooper planned the first day of mourning, time for Australia Day 1938, in an attempt to stab the conscience of the nation awake. Bill Ferguson stepped forward as the tall, calm figure at the centre of the day of mourning, Australia's first public civil rights demonstration. His courageous faith, strong voice and the determined manner in which he spoke of the sufferings of his people have led people to compare him to the visionary leader of the American Civil Rights Movement, Dr Martin Luther King. Always an advocate of peaceful protest, Bill Ferguson was not afraid of using strong words to stab the conscience of the nation. We ask you to study the problem from the Aborigines' point of view. We do not ask for charity, we do not ask you to study us as scientific freaks. We ask only for justice, decency and fair play. Surely your hearts and minds are not so callous that you will refuse to consider your policy of degrading and humiliating and exterminating old Australia's Aborigines. He collapsed in Church Street, Dubbo, while campaigning as an independent in the 1950 federal election. His appeal was direct and simple. To all of you of Aboriginal blood, I say, I am fighting for your freedom. I will use every effort to fight these atrocities. He died a few days later, after hearing he'd only polled 388 votes. His daughter Isabel said, My father died of a broken heart. His humble grave sits quietly in the old Dubbo Cemetery. Seventeen years later, his hopes were realised at the 1967 referendum, which proposed changes to the constitution to improve the rights for Indigenous people. 90% of Australia voted for the justice Bill Ferguson had fought so long and hard to win. dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. <laughs> <laughs>